Hi everyone, this is Amy. Welcome to my channel. Another one of my adult skaters has just passed her adult pre-bronze moves in the field. This test offers skaters the opportunity to highlight their abilities and advance to the next level. Sometimes skaters will feel that working on their skating skills or moves is not as exciting as practicing jumps and spins. But these skills will improve all aspects of your skating. It doesn't matter how high you can jump or how fast you can spin if the rest of your skating skills just aren't there. I should also mention that beginning in July of next year, that's 2023, US figure skating will change the name of the moves in the field to skating skills. This is a name change. We use the term skating skills for competition component scores. If you compete, and this is true whether you compete with 6.0 or IJS, components are half of your competition score. Judges consider the use of deep edges, steps and turns, balance, rhythmic knee action, precision of foot placement, flow, and glide, varied use of power, speed, and acceleration, use of multi-directional skating and one foot skating. Moves in the field require you to master the skating skills and transitions necessary for singles free skating. Renaming moves in the field to skating skills makes everything more consistent and hopefully easier to understand. Keep in mind, now is a time of transition. So if you're watching this video in the future, welcome to the past. A time when skating skills tests were still called moves in the field. I go into a lot more detail about the upcoming rule changes in my other video on rule changes. If you missed that video, there's a link to that in the description down below. Before I get into all the specifics, if you're new here, I not only coach skaters on proper skating techniques and work with them off the ice, I also do my best to fill the knowledge gap when navigating and understanding the US figure skating system. I try to make videos on topics that skaters and parents may find difficult to understand. Just in case you haven't watched any of my other videos, I'll start at the beginning. I have chapters in the description down below. If you wanna skip around, I hope you don't bounce around too much. You might miss something and you can benefit from watching the whole video. What are moves in the field or skating skills? And why do you need to pass tests on them? These tests emphasize essential skating skills and edge control. They were first introduced as moves in the field in 1996 to replace compulsory or school figures. They're judging the compulsory figures in the UF National Figure Skating Championships. The whole reason figure skating is called figure skating is because of figures. Compulsory figures have long been a mystery. Why spend three or four hours a day trying to perfect these designs on the ice? At one time, compulsory figures were 60% of a skater's competition score. Beginning in 1967, figures were progressively devalued. They've come up with a proposal to eliminate compulsory figures from world and Olympic competition. People are finally asking, what's the role that figures play in skating? Figures now make up just 20% of the total score for the junior and senior men and women. There are no figures anymore at world championships. Some skaters had very strong figures, but were less impressive in their free skating performance. This confused television audiences. What would you rather watch, this or this? Well, you and most of the rest of the world would rather watch the second skater. The figures portion of the competition was often not televised. So you're gonna blame television, we're well, responsible. Part of, part of it is that. This is when we didn't have the internet or DVRs or anything where we could watch or stream on demand. I didn't even have cable in my area until I was around 16 years old, yes. I'm that old. So network television was all we had. Depending upon where you lived, you only had around eight channels to choose from. So the networks wanted to air programs that advertisers wanted to sponsor. That meant that it only aired programming that viewers wanted to tune into. I do recall bowling being on quite a bit on Sundays. ABC Sports presents the Pro Bowlers Tour. I'm not sure why viewers would prefer to watch bowling over figures. Apparently, bowling was more exciting. Oh well. They take up a great deal of training time, especially in the morning, which conflicts with school. They're very costly for the ISU to run at competitions. They're not exactly what you'd call a spectator sport. And there's limited practice ice in Europe, which puts the European skaters at a disadvantage. Sides are now drawn and emotions run high over the debate as to whether or not figures are only an art form in themselves or the very foundation for skating, providing the basic skills for free skating, body awareness and the edge control so crucial to skating. Without compulsory figures, there would be no jumps. There would be no footwork. There would be no program. 
The biggest concern to most skaters and coaches is how it will affect the quality of free skating and what direction skating will go without them. If you drop figures, you're going to find a different kind of sport. It could really hurt the sport. The ISU, of course, doesn't quite see it that way. They believe they're freeing skating from an anchor they've carried for too long. The United States and Canada have submitted proposals for compromises that might make it possible to retain school figures in some form. Figures haven't been used as a scoring element in international competition since 1990. Instead, at least here in the United States, U.S. figure skating created moves in the field. This is what will become skating skills. These tests are designed to ensure that a skater has acquired the skills at a specific level before moving on to the next level. You must take your moves or skating skills test before testing your singles free skate tests of the same level. Adult skaters who wish to compete at bronze levels and above first must pass their moves or skating skills and then their singles or free skate tests. By the way, I have another video with my skater Monica taking her adult pre-bronze singles free skate test and a video of her taking her adult bronze moves or skating skills test. If you're interested in watching those, there's a link to them in the description down below. These moves slash skating skills tests have patterns, but emphasis is on the posture, carriage, flow, power, and quickness. Each pattern emphasizes different aspects. There are eight tests in the standard track. Currently, pre-preliminary, preliminary, pre-juvenile, preliminary, pre juvenile, intermediate, novice, junior, and senior. Here's another area that may be confusing if you watch this in the future. In July 2023, the terms pre-juvenile through senior will be renamed pre-bronze through gold for the standard track. Most skaters strive to become a gold medalist. Replacing the term senior with gold when it comes to testing is intended to help skaters and their parents understand the levels a little bit better. It can be confusing that passing your senior free skate or moves test means achieving the gold medalist level. This is another name change. Skaters 21 and older may test either standard or choose to test through the adult track. In the adult track, the levels are called pre-bronze, bronze, silver, and gold. As there are fewer tests in the adult track, it's unclear at this time when I'm recording this, how this will affect the adult track. These changes will make the adult levels really confusing, especially after a skater passes adult gold. One of the advantages of testing through the adult track is that it's possible to become a gold medalist after only four tests rather than eight with the standard track. To continue testing, they would cross back over to the standard track at the intermediate level, which would take them back down to silver. It is confusing. It remains to be seen if there will be any name changes to the adult levels. Regardless of what they're called, the tests become more challenging as a skater advances. Each test passed is a cause for celebration. Adults that have no interest in competing or taking singles free skating tests can benefit from preparing for moves or skating skills. Many adult skaters see this as a way to challenge themselves and improve their skating ability. I find that moves slash skating skills help skaters put all the skills they've learned up to this point in context. Each level does have its own challenges, but each level will help you progress to the next because you've learned new ways of control and power. Test sessions featuring panels of U.S. figure skating officials are hosted by clubs across the country. And now virtually, Caitlin took her test as a virtual test. I'm not gonna go into all the detail about virtual tests in this video. I've done that in other videos several times. If you're interested in finding more about virtual testing, use the links in the description down below. In this video, I will go through her test with you so that you know exactly what it takes to pass your adult pre-bronze moves or skating skills test, depending upon when you're watching this video. I'll also compare adult pre-bronze to the standard track pre-preliminary, explain how they differ from each other. Caitlin is 30 years old and she's been skating for a few years in group lessons. She began taking private lessons to prepare for the adult pre-bronze moves slash skating skills test, sorry. For seven months, Caitlin has been taking private lessons, working on both freestyle and skating skills. She also practices a few times a week. This is a pretty typical timeline for somebody working on singles free skate and skating skills simultaneously. Let's get into the actual first test. Adult pre-bronze moves in the field slash skating skills. This test consists of five moves, forward perimeter stroking, counterclockwise and clockwise, basic consecutive edges, forward right and left foot spirals, the waltz eight, 
and forward and backward crossovers. The last move, forward and backward crossovers, is an additional move. Standard track skaters do not get that move until their second test, preliminary. The order of the test was changed on July 1st, 2021. The forward and backward crossovers previously came before the waltz eight. Now the order is the same as pre-preliminary with the addition of forward and backward crossovers tacked on as the last move. Now, I will show you Caitlin's test and provide you with commentary that explains what she's done well and what could still maybe use some improvement. Following my commentary, I will post her entire test in the same forum that it was submitted for this virtual test. You can watch it without my running commentary. I'll put the timestamp right up here somewhere so you know where to find it. But it's super helpful if you just watch what I'm going to say too. The expectations for this test align with the pre-preliminary moves or skating skills test. This test aims to encourage beginning adult skaters to learn the fundamentals of ice skating. No great deal of technical ability, carriage, or flow is expected. Candidates must show knowledge of the steps, fairly good edges, and some evidence of good form. Here is the first move. Adult pre-bronze pattern one. Forward perimeter stroking. The skater will perform four to eight straight strokes, depending on the length of the ice and the skater's strength, with a minimum of three crossovers around both ends, using the entire ice surface for one full lap of the rink in both directions. Introductory steps are optional. The primary focus is on continuous flow, strength, and extension. This differs from the standard track tests, where the focus is on power with the secondary focus on extension. Power is the creation and maintenance of speed and flow without visible effort. Power is developed by a continuous rise and fall of the skating knee and the pressure of the blade's edge against the ice. The skater should demonstrate the ability to exert equal pressure against the ice surface on both the right and left foot. The end results of power are velocity, speed or pace, flow across the ice and acceleration. Flow plus strength equals power. The judges are looking to see the skater demonstrating the ability to maintain a consistent and undisturbed running edge across the ice. Extension. This is the general carriage characterized by an extended body line. The head's angle flows naturally from the line of the back. The arm should be naturally extended with shoulders down and back. The skater's hands should follow the line of movement. The final extended position should be executed in a controlled manner. It should achieve the maximum length of all body lines. Test standards and expectations. Stroking, shallow edges with some flats are okay. Sustained glide with an extension of the free leg. Some evidence of good posture. Skater balanced over the skating foot. Common errors, toe pushing, weak posture or poor extension. Inability to properly use the blade to stroke weak clockwise direction crossovers. You do not want to see stepovers, rush stroking down the length of the ice, rather than achieving a glide with an extended free leg. Four to eight strokes. Taller people are expected to take fewer strokes. Use the hockey lines and the dots as your guide. The skating knee can also be too stiff. Remember, you want to see a bend and a rise. Looking down at the ice instead of ahead of you, arms sometimes are held too high, starting and ending the crossovers in the wrong place, not being on an edge for your crossovers. Here is Caitlin's forward perimeter stroking. These are her intro steps. She does two crossovers on the way in, which is a little unusual, but that's what she prefers to do. And you are allowed seven intro steps. Her stroking is good. This is her first set of crossovers. She's got four. Nice sustained glide in between each, each stroke. Ending pattern is one stroke and a stop. Now she's doing the opposite direction. This is the clockwise direction. Again, her intro strokes. And there's two crossovers coming in.
I'd like to see her improve her crossovers to get a better understroke. There's a little toe push on the second stroke. Really nice sustained glide though. One last stroke and stop. The judge made a note of two check pluses on this move. That's super great. On to the next move. Basic consecutive edges. Forward outside edges, inside edges. Backward outside edges and backward inside edges. Starting from a standing position, the skater will perform four to six half circles, alternating feet using an access line, such as a hockey line. The skater may start each set on either foot, but they must be skated in the order listed here. The primary focus is on edge quality. This is the same focus as standard track. Pre-preliminary. Edge quality is initiated through proper body alignment over the skating foot, creating a stable arc that travels uninterrupted until a required transition. Depth of edge refers to the acuteness of the arc and is created by the lean of the body and the angle of the blade when it takes the ice. Good edge quality results in confident, short, and controlled movement. In other words, substantial steadiness with a minimum of subcurves. By the way, I have another video that is all about edges. There's a link to that video in the description down below. Test standards and expectation. Complete half circles, four to six with equal lows. Starting edge is close to perpendicular to the axis. Some evidence of good posture and body position. Common errors, toe pushing, not beginning perpendicular to the axis, lacking control on the second half of the back outside edge, or lacking control on the back inside edges, inability to check upper body rotation, rotating the body too soon or too quickly, or over rotating at the beginning of the edge, causing the shoulders and hips to over rotate, making it difficult to hold on to the edge, and making the skater feel twisted or stuck when they try to complete the edge. Lobes that are too large or maybe are U-shaped so that you must return to the axis on a straight line or flat rather than being on the correct edge. Not being able to retain alignment over the skating hip, trailing the pushing foot on the ice instead of picking it up once your weight has been transferred to the other foot. Not enough flow. Lobes may be too small or very shallow. Okay, so here's Caitlin's forward consecutive edges. There are no introductory steps for this move. These are her forward outside edges. Notice she's stepping with her feet together perpendicular to the axis. Very, very nice. And now her forward inside edges, a little wobbly, and that was a little bit of a wide step. Oop, that's an oops moment. She recovered. They're not as nice as the forward outside. And now the backward outside. She can have a little bit more control of the lower body here. And now the backward inside. These are the toughest. I'd like to see her hold that toe to heel a little bit longer. The judge marked check plus on the forward outside and a check on the forward inside, backward outside and backward inside. She commented that Caitlin could work on better control of her free leg. 
but she did notice that she has good control of her upper body. Adult pre-bronze moves number three, forward right and left foot spirals. The skater will perform right and left foot spirals down the rink's length, maintaining a spiral position on each foot for approximately four seconds with an extended leg held at hip level or higher. The skater may be on flats and may start on either foot. Introductory steps are optional. This move focuses on extension with an apparent effort to extend body lines and control position. The focus is the same as standard track pre-preliminary. Standards and expectations. Hold the glide for approximately four seconds. Your leg needs to be at least at hip level with your back arched and good form. You return to two feet and then the next spiral position spirals can be very shallow edges or flats. You must be steady with no pronounced lapses in balance. Common errors, inability to balance in a spiral position. Your free leg must be above your hip. Often we see it held too low or off to the side. Sometimes skaters will curve on edges instead of in straight lines. Here's Caitlin's forward right and left foot spirals. This move. Here are her intro steps and her first spirals here. One, two, three, four. Just made it. Left spiral, one, two, three, four, five. Very nice. The judge commented check plus on this move and wrote nice. Adult pre-bronze move number four, the waltz eight. The skater will perform the waltz eight using large circumference circles, completing two patterns on each foot with control. The focus is on edge quality with a minimum of sub curves. Test standards and expectations. Some controlled positions and edges, awareness of rhythmic motion. Waltz timing is three, four. I sometimes use a music track to help skaters keep the beat, control after three turns. Circles are larger than in figures. You do not need to return to the center, but you do want to show that you have an axis. The circle is cut into approximate thirds. Common errors, not being able to hold onto the edge after the three turns. This is usually caused by the skater putting too much energy into the turn. It can cause a skater to be whipping the turns around, which then causes a skater to put their free foot down to steady themselves. No rhythm or timing. A waltz count is three beats per measure, and this move has six beats per edge. Try to skate three beats in each position. Like I said, you can use a music track to help you. Sometimes the back edge is too short or the circle is not cut into thirds. Some have difficulty checking the three turn or controlling the forward outside edge and controlling the upper body rotation in a position. Most of these issues can be easily solved by not rotating your body as soon as you start an edge. There's time to set the body position and then rotate on all three edges. Here's Caitlin's Waltz 8. I'm adding a music track so that you can see the timing. She is a little off on the timing, a little too far forward on the back, forward to backward mohawk. Could have held that a little bit longer. Been a little neater with her feet. That was a little too quick of an edge there. A little wobbly. Again, the back edge is a little too quick. The judge checked off right and left. Adult pre-bronze pattern number five, forward and backward crossovers. As I mentioned earlier, this is preliminary moves pattern number one for standard track skaters. It's on the second test for them. For adults, this is on the first test. This move is all about demonstrating that you can stroke powerful forward and backward crossovers while accelerating with proper skating technique. For the adult track, the focus is on continuous flow and strength. For the standard track in preliminary, power is the focus. This is what the judges are looking for. Remember that flow plus strength equals power. So there's really no difference in the focus points between the two tracks. They're just using different words. This move may start in either direction on either foot. 
forward crossovers must be skated first before the backward crossovers. The pattern may be skated anywhere on the ice. It's common to see this placed in the end hockey circles or centered in the middle of the rink. Four to six crossovers per circle, the four circles should be equal in size. Get into the ice and skate each edge of your forward crossovers on a well-bent knee with good free leg extension. There can sometimes be a tendency for skaters to cross over with their free foot turned out heel first, but the best crossovers lead with the toe, not the heel. So it's preferred that you aim your toe at the center of the circle. For backward crossovers, be sure to reach into the circle with your inside leg and get your second push underneath you. This will help you gain momentum. Standards and expectations. Ability to maintain flow. Correct blade use through the push. Stroked, not stepped. Remember that crossovers have two pushes. Ability to increase power. Good posture. We also want to start to see some knee bend and rise, keeping your upper body at a consistent height. This is challenging and takes good coaching and a lot of practice. The transitions are critical. One foot transitions between the two circles are expected. The transitions between the two forward circles onto the backward circle will be a swing roll to a change of edge into an open mohawk. Again, a one foot transition is expected between the two backward circles. Common errors include toe pushing or incorrect use of the blade to push, forward crossovers weaker than the backward ones, insufficient ability to create power, poor posture, and up and down motion throughout the crossovers. This indicates lack of smoothness. Judges are qualifying and observing your smoothness and efficiency of your skating by checking where your head is and arms are against the horizon or the top of the dasher boards. This is where timing of your knee bend and rise are critical. We sometimes see skaters with crossovers that include only one push and scratchy back crossovers because the skater is too far forward on their blade. You want your weight in the middle front of the blade. This is the ball of your foot. If you keep the weight there, you'll have an easier time with your back crossovers because the blade and not your toe pick will be in contact with the ice. Caitlin is performing this pattern at center ice, which is different from where most skaters perform it. Most of the time you see it at the two hockey circles at the end of the rink. Caitlin prefers to perform it in the center, which is also acceptable. Let's look at Caitlin's. These are her intro steps and her forward crossovers. I wish she'd get a better under push and she is moving a little slow. One foot transition. Now she's pacing herself because here's that swing mohawk. Good. We're working on making some improvements to her backward crossovers as well as her forward crossovers. One foot transition. And she did it. The judge checked off that she maintained flow with correct use of the blade. She also checked off good posture and the transitions. So Caitlin passed her test. There were no additional comments from the judge. Next, I will show you her test in the exact form we submitted it for her virtual test session. Note that I stood center ice near the dasher boards between the two hockey team boxes on the judge's side. For those that wonder about things like this, I used a GoPro Hero 10 Black with the media mod for audio. I recorded it in 4K, 60 frames per second, with a narrow lens and hyper smooth boost. The bit rate is set to high, auto shutter and auto white balance with medium sharpness and natural color. I use my phone to note the date and time to get a timestamp. Also note that this is one continuous shot. I do not stop the camera between moves and there is absolutely no editing. This is exactly as the test was performed in real time. I hope you find this video helpful. Please remember to subscribe and tap the bell so that you never miss a video and share it with anyone else you think could benefit from it. Just post it on your social media too. Here's Caitlin's unedited test. Hello, 
my name is Caitlin. I'm an individual member of U.S. Figure Skating. I'm 30 years old and I'm testing the adult free bronze moves in the field.
This is Amy. Happy skating. I will see you real soon. Thank you for watching. Bye.